Hi, my name is Jenny Donnelly, and this is Shauna Damberg, and you have joined the Don't Mess With Our Kids podcast, hosted by Her Voice Movement. There are women and men and families, young and old, especially the mama bears, that have decided enough is enough because the attack on our children and on our families has gone way too far. There is a grassroots movement uprising in America right now called Don't Mess With Our Kids. And we are inviting you to engage and use your voice in an hour where the United States of America is in desperate need of God. There's a couple ways that you can be involved. One of those ways is you're doing it right now. You're listening to this podcast and we want you to subscribe and share this with the people that you love and care about. The second way to be involved is to put this on your calendar, April 13th, 2024. We are asking people to go to their state capitol to pray, to receive communion, to plead the blood of Jesus over their state, to see the devil fail miserably so that we can send change into these states on a local level, but also on a national level. I want you to envision all 50 states one day at their capitals. It's going to be amazing. Also, in the very near future, and we're going to put up the date for this because at the time of this recording, we're still getting this figured out. But in the very near future, we will have an incredible gathering that will change the history of this nation. And we don't want to do it without you. This is a call for 1 million women and their families to stand on the National Mall in Washington, D.C. to see America changed and turned back to God. And we believe you have a big part to play in that. Today's guest is somebody that is family to us. We've known Ben Rose and his wife, Heather, and their amazing kids for over eight years now. And I'll never forget meeting them, seeing the God call on their life, and then hearing their story. They told me their story transparently right when we met them because they wanted us to know how God had radically saved them and recovered them from what the enemy meant for evil. God turned it for good. I can't wait for you to hear a story today. Let me just read his bio really quick. Ben Rose is passionate about seeing people set free from religion, walking in their kingdom authority and operating in new covenant revelation. Originally from Alaska, he firmly believes that there is hope for the city of Portland and that we will see a move of God happen here. Amen. <laughs> We're from Portland. We say amen to that. Ben and his wife, Heather, have been married for over 20 years and have three incredible kids. They are incredible. Ashton, Taylor, and Macy. They pastor the Collective Church in Tigard, Oregon, and also founded Cross the Island. You're going to hear a lot about that today. A ministry dedicated to helping people overcome unwanted sexual behavior and help them walk in sexual integrity. And this is one of the greatest things that Bob and I, Bob and I, my husband, Bob have ever been a part of. And that was to, um, come together and decide to plant a church together. And now they are the lead pastors of our church, but we did this together with Shauna and her husband and a whole bunch of other people that love Jesus. But really what we love to see is people get free. This is all about freedom. And today's episode is truly about that. So let's bring Ben on. Ben, I'm so pumped to have you on here today. You know, Bob and I, Shauna and JD, we can say this, that we have believed in what you and Heather are doing on the earth. Obviously, you guys are incredible pastors of the collective. I get to be there almost every Sunday and see the glory of God land in that place. It's been amazing. <laughs> To yeah. watch what you and Heather are doing to set people free from the jowls and the grips of pornography is astounding to watch. It's astounding to see how many people have actually been gripped by this thing, but you and Heather have dedicated your lives to making yeah. sure that other families have the same restoration, the same freedom that you and your family have had. So I want you to start here. Why don't you just share your story? And then, of course, we have a whole bunch of other questions and dialogue. Yeah. So good to be with you, friends. Um, it, yeah. Sh short version of the story is that grew up a pastor's kid. And that just means I was at church all the time. 
and uh, <laughs> born, born under a pew. Um, I have loved Jesus my whole life, you know, have loved um, ministry, have loved, have loved people, have loved really seeing people get set free my entire life. And, um, but when I was eight years old, I had an experience with another boy. We were left home alone and, or we were left unsupervised in a locked room. And it was, it was at that time that, um, just sexual curiosity and exploration began to happen. And, uh, it happened a few times over, over a span of time. And and really during that time, I really believe that's when the hook got in the enemy used that. I, I didn't know exactly what we were doing, but I knew what we were doing was wrong. You know, I knew that this was not right. And it's amazing how shame set in so quickly, you know, into an eight year old boy whom I today at 44 years old, have incredible compassion for that, that eight year old boy. Um, you know, eight and nine years old, between eight and 10 is when the majority of young uh, when kids are exposed to pornography um, and that's either through unwanted disclosure or um, from seeking it out. So, so that, so I'm, I'm kind of the, in the, the statistic of that eight to nine year old, eight, you know, 10 year old range, but you know, so before the days of cell phones, thank God. Um, but I just felt this un what I thought was an unnatural pull. I thought, I am weird. I am hypersexualized. Something is wrong with me. Nobody else is dealing with this. And so I grew up with this in this paradigm really of this unwanted sexual behavior. And I mean, down to the fact when I would go over to a, to a friend's house, um, I, you know, I, I could walk, I would walk through the doors and just instantly knew that there's pornography there or that they, you know, their dad struggled with, with sexual brokenness. And so I would, well, you know, and right there to interrupt, uh, I just, what, why do you think that is? Do you think it's because it's a spirit? It's a spirit. How did you know? Okay. Let's, and, and just, just a quick commercial break or like yeah. a quick, like well, education break here. It's a spirit. It, it is. And, and it's what's so, what's so tricky about it is, um, Oh man, we could just go into dive into some teaching right now. But yeah, we're going to go so, back to your story. So just okay. kind of just give what, us a little bit, then let's go back to okay. your story. It's tricky because it's a, it's a natural desire that's given by God. So it plays on a desire, a sexual desire that that is God given and God made, you know, and 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 man's desire um, for woman and woman's desire for man, you know, even sexually. And so, but yeah, no, I there there is there is this, I think a spirit that does come alongside um and and, and that's, that's how that, you could detect it that's how know. i could de- de- detect it and it you know and and so um you know i just developed really bad brain trails and we know the neuroplasticity of the mind and so while i loved jesus i grew up loving jesus i loved youth group i loved i loved everything jesus and church and um i had this underlying i had this secret i had this double life that i was living And it would, it would be when I traveled or, you know, went on a sports trip, trying to steal a magazine or early, early days of the internet when, you know, one page took forever to load, um, trying to just, just to get an image or trying to, to find something. Um, So, so it was this desire, you know, for, for that. And, and when you you say hook, I'm totally, you're going to work with me here on this because I I don't mean to keep interrupting you because that can be frustrating for you, but you said hook. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Um, I mean that it was something where it was lodged in there. It's so like the enemy lodged something in my spirit, meaning that, that I, I couldn't myself take it out. Okay. Um, and so, you know, I would think I would, I was free. I would, I would have a moment of personal revival, you know, alter at summer camp, something where, where I was like, okay, God, I want to be free from this. I remember going to the staircase at this, at our, at our, at our the stage at the altar. And I mean, hundreds of times saying, God, I don't, I don't want this anymore. I want to be free of this. And, um, but never allowing anybody into my story, you know, mm-hmm. always trying to do things on my own. Cause it was so shameful, you know, and uh, I thought it was a morality issue. Whereas mm-hmm. now, now I, I see it more as, and parents, parents, you have to understand this is that this is not about 
a lot of times about your kids being immoral as much as it is them being caught in a chemical in a chemical in chemical warfare and spiritual warfare and and um and not so much a morality warfare you know we get tripped out when we parents find out that their kids have been looking at pornography and and all the emotions and mm-hmm. and to understand that it's not many times it's not a morality issue mm-hmm. kids that love they, the kids that want to serve jesus but they just don't know how to get the hook out and you know when you're fishing um you know we fish in alaska and there would be tension on the hook and then all of a sudden you'd lose tension and you're like oh i think i lost the fish well it's because the fish might be swimming a different direction and all of a sudden the hook grabs again, you know? And so that's how I felt my life was, is like, mm-hmm. there'd be, there, there would be slack and I'd be like, I think I'm good. Yeah. Like I kicked this thing, you know? And then all of a sudden, you know, something would come into my life where, um, you know, and I, Jenny and Shauna, when, when you're not in a culture that's, that's about transparency and honesty and like going to hard places in, in ourselves and emotions with the help of the Holy spirit, it's like, I, I, I don't even think I stopped to consider like, why am I doing this? Like, is this a replacement for something? Am I, you know, because it, chemically and um, spiritually, it, it starts to become a medication. It's, it's, it's a, um, it's a false, it's a synthetic drug. You know, it's a like false, a coping me- mechanism. it's a, it's 100% a coping me- mechanism. You know, if, if there's fear, I remember oh. one time I, I was at the Portland zoo and I saw this bear and he would like go f- f- one wall and he would hit his head against the wall and he'd turn and he'd go and he'd hit his head against the other wall. And he just went back and forth hitting his head. And I felt like that's, I literally, when I saw that bear, I was like, that's what I feel like. That's what, what I grew up feeling like is I was, I would bump up into something, whether it was fear, anxiety, am I enough? Do I have what it takes? And instead of, instead of sitting with that emotion and taking that to Jesus, it was like, I know what can medicate me and I know what can cause an instant, an instant chemical reaction, which will satiate for a moment. But but then ultimately, ultimately it leads, it leads to death, right? We have so much more to talk about, but I just wanted this so far, you have given lots of revelation to what's actually happening. Mm -hmm. So you talked about the hook. So this is why somebody cannot get themselves free. Mm -hmm. right? You talked to, okay, there's a hook. That's good to know. It's a spirit on the other end pulling in the line. And I have to think too, that the enemy allows for that time of slack just to make us think, okay, Mm -hmm. we're good. And then, you know, here he goes again, right? It's a spirit, right? So there's this element to it that I think is so important for people to understand, Ben, that this, like you said, is not a morality issue as much Mm -hmm. as it is they're, they're, they're hooked. There's a hook. Hooked. So continue with your story. Okay. I'll go ahead. No. And I mean, you know, people call it addiction. People call it all, all it's, you're right. There's, it's a spirit at the other end of the, of the fishing pole using natural, natural, you know, Chemical. using our, using our humanity really against us. Knowing, knowing the, the enemy knows how to get to people like from day one, he's using the same playbook. Right. So Continuing yeah. on with on with the story, you know, made lots of mile markers. I was just a mile marker guy, you know, by this time, by such and such time, you know, I'm going to be done with this. This is the last time. Next time this happens, I'm going to tell somebody, you know, just on and on and on and on and, and you know, blowing by all those markers because they don't carry any weight. And, and life just becomes, life for me just became about, I can't really let anybody know who Ben is. I have to put on a mask. And I have to spin a lot of plates because I, and, and, you know, that, that gets you into people pleasing. So like all these like secondary addictions, I think you could call them from, from not actually dealing with what needs to be dealt with, you know, people pleasing fear of man, um, you know, all the different things, the deception. Yeah. They're uh, yeah. You're right, Sean, byproducts of, of living this lifestyle. And then, you know, I meet Heather. I just, I fall in love with Heather. I just know she's the one. And, you know, I make, I make a a milestone that says, Hey, when Heather and I get married, like this is, there's, I'm not bringing this into marriage. There's no way, you know, I know better than that. And, um, you know, plus, plus, uh, you know, I actually, 
you know, I, I, I had saved myself for marriage, you know, amazingly, right. Even, even through all, all of this, I still, there was a sanctity that I, that I still felt about, about the act of sex and, and like, you know, this is because we're getting married. This is going to really take care of things. And, and um, like somehow my brokenness was just going to heal, you know, because I'd come into um, covenant with Heather and, and, and I just, I found myself a few months into marriage sneaking off to the bedroom um, in the middle of the night. And, and um, you know, at this point we had a computer with some, with decent internet, you know, and, and so just, you know, and it wasn't all the time. So I could, I could, I could argue that this, Hey, this is just, it's not very often. It's just, it's not as you, you know, and, and the, this cycle of like, um, you know, but we always say lust is not satisfied. Lust never pushes away from the table and says I'm full. And so it demands more. And so I, I started having what I, what I would consider, you know, I have to, I've had to take a sober assessment of self and, and really go back into some of these relationships. But, um, I consider like really like emotional affairs. I think I was um, not physical affairs, but just, just infatuations and, and um, unhealthy relationships with the opposite sex while, while I'm married. And um, you know, that, uh, that obviously brings a whole, you know, Heather's, Heather's radar is going off and, you know, her, her um, perception or her um, what's the word I'm looking for, you know, the word I'm looking for is, is just, is spot on. She's just like, is something her going on? It, yeah. Her yeah. discernment. Yeah. yeah. And, and her discernment's going off and I'm like, no, 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 no. And so she's feeling crazy. So I'm spinning stuff. I'm not letting anyone close to my heart. She's, she's feeling crazy. She doesn't want me close to her heart. You know, and this is just, this is just not really working out. And then, you know, more milestones with the kids. Ashton comes along. I'm going to stop. Taylor comes along. I'm going to stop. Macy comes along. I'm going to stop. And nothing, nothing was, no, no external source was, was doing this. Um, I'm a, you know, we're terrible saviors of ourselves. So fast forward, we moved to Portland, Oregon. We feel God calling us to Portland. Um, I think he just allowed me to get really frustrated. I was really frustrated with everything. A lot of times, by the way, when you're, if you see major mood swings in your kids, now this isn't true across the boards, but um, it could be a sign of pornography. Their pornography begins to really affect the mood um, because there's such there's such an there's there's really an anger at self that comes out, um, and when you're angry with yourself, you take it out usually on the people who you're closest to, your, your home. And so, um, so I was just I was just like frustrated, and I was mad, and I was I was just like. You know, and I chalked it up to being um, restless, which which I think I was to a degree. And so we moved to Portland, and um, man, seven months. We spent seven months like in the pre-launch of a church, building a church, building a core team, and I mean, things were cooking with the core team. We had it like I want to say fifty some people, just meeting people, the words of knowledge, just. It, so it was God was amazing. still using you. Uh, oh yeah. And and so that was, that too was part of the deception. It was like, well, things are going good, right? Things are going well. So, so maybe this is not something, um, you know, that's really having an impact or really harming me. And oh boy, that's what, a, what, a, what a deception that is. Right. Wow. And so, and so, um, but during this time is when I, that, that's when the, the wheels really fell off is because I was, um, I was like, well, I'm anonymous. Nobody knows me here. And I started, I started going to some adult establishments and, and um, you just spot really spiraling out of control. And, and uh, it got to the point where I just, I couldn't do it anymore. And I ended up, I, I ended up lying. I, I lied. I gave like a, a iceberg confession. Uh, 20% was true. And about 80% was still under the water and, and not true. And, um, Thankfully that started the process though, because I didn't know how I just was like, that was my hail Mary. That was like, uh, help, help kind of, but not really. I'm going to still, you know, do, do this myself. And thankfully the Holy spirit is so kind. The Holy spirit gave a dream to somebody and um, they, they're like, they had new, you know, the, the leadership was like, wait, there's, there's more, this is not the whole story. And so um, they confronted me and, uh, it was like four days before we were to launch the church officially. 
And um, they, they literally sat me down and they were like, in Jesus name, tell us what's going on. And I just, I just, I gave a disclosure and, and, um, and I ended up confessing to Heather that night and all was great. And, and it was perfect. No, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I was healed. It was amazing. No, and no, but honestly, that's when that's, that was the moment that the hook got just ripped out. Mm, so, wow. and, then, and then, yeah, and then my, uh, my heart began to heal. Yeah. So you always say, Ben, to um, bring things into the light. This is one of the statements I've heard you say dozens and dozens of times is um, yeah. bring things into the light. And that's what you did. And yeah. you've seen it over and over and over again. Here's can, a can question. I say, oh, please do. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. I was, I was going to say what it, it didn't go well. I did get fired. I did get lose my job. I, I lost a lot of credibility with friends and colleagues and things like that. But it was the greatest thing that God ever allowed to happen in our life is for that to happen because it set us on uh, a journey of healing. And um, so I, I just want to say like, it was, it was the worst, best thing to ever happen to us. And I lately, Jenny, I've been, I've been not saying, the goal is to be porn free. I think the goal is to walk in the light Mm -hmm. because if it's just about being porn free, Mm -hmm. I think, I think it's like, no, we we want, we want people that we want people to walk, to walk in the light as he is in the light and have, yeah. Anyways, Mm -hmm. the blood of Jesus continue. Yeah. Continually cleansing us from all unrighteousness. First John one seven. So. Wow. That's so good. Well, what you're really speaking about is freedom comes when people get reconciled to the heart of the father. And I look at my past, I look at all the sin, you know, that I was engaged in. And when I look with a heart of compassion, I had to look at myself the way that God did. I couldn't look at myself from a Jenny standpoint. I had to say, father God, how did you see that broken little girl? And he's like, that was a girl who did not know how greatly she was loved. She thought she didn't know any of that. And I, I saw the Lord one time, like he said, let me, let me share with you how this really went. He said, when I saw you sin, I said, she's looking for me yeah. because she cannot find love. She cannot find um, acceptance and that, and the only thing that God can give. And so the remedy here is an encounter with God. That's not in one moment. I'll go encounter. Sounds like it's one moment, one event. It's not, it's, it's, you're so changed by the love of God that you get to walk out a oneness with him because mm-hmm. it's, it's really one of those situations where, you know, somebody listening to this, whether it's porn or maybe they're, maybe they're wanting to stop smoking, you know, maybe yeah. whatever, like we reach for things to calm the anxiety. Now it's become a brain trail. Now the chemical reaction is involved and now we feel stuck. Um, and somewhere along the way, you know, God obviously set you free And you've said this, that freedom's worth the fallout. You just decided one one of the coolest things I remember the first time you told your story is that you went back to Alaska and told all of your financial supporters. Can you tell us about just some (laughs) of the fallout and some of the, I mean, just this radical truth telling you did not just confess one time and move on. (laughs) Um, What you were just saying about, about empathy towards yourself and that I really believe that's one of the things that the Holy Spirit does is he holds our hand and he takes us back to look with empathy. I, I just heard that trauma, it grows when there's not an empathetic observer. Mm. And I was like, oh. oh, that's huge because the Holy Spirit wants to say, no, no, no. There was an empathetic observer the whole time and and, and he wants us to be that. And then he is that empathetic observer that um, that helps to 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 heal trauma. Yeah. I flew back to Alaska. I I, I was like, if we're going to do this, let's do this. Let's not do the trickle little dabble. Do ya? Um, I was like, let's, let's do this. And it was like, it was already out in the open. And I thought, you know what? Why not? Why not? And I, and I felt like the Holy spirit when I was a kid, this is so weird. I felt like when I was a kid, I felt like there was a voice inside my head that said that you're going to have a moral failure when you're, when you're older, you're going to have a moral Mm, failure. And I mean like eight, nine years old, weird, 10 years old. And, and um, so 
you know, so that, that was like, that was so weird. Right. Um, and I forgot where I was at. You, I went back I was home. you went back home to tell your, thank you. I have like a million things I want to say. Um, <laughs> So, so there was this, yeah. So I went, I, I went back home and I, um, cause this was, part, so that, I know what I was gonna say. This is part of crossing the Island. I actually, when that voice came that, that you're gonna have a moral, moral failure. I remember having another, like, I think it was the Holy spirit. He was like, you actually will not heal until you cross the Island. And I knew instantly what Island it was. It was Admiralty Island outside my hometown seventh largest island in North America, the most brown bears, one per square mile. It was like, until you cross this thing and deal with this thing head on, you're going to, you will always, you know, deal with this issue. And so I flew home and this was part of crossing the island for me. And I just got all my supporters in a room and, and just said, this is, and I didn't say, you know, I, I was really struggling and I just was having, the enemy was really coming against me. And I was like, I told them everything I exposed every, every, yeah, I exposed everything. And, um, you know, the enemy for so long had just had made me believe that if I told people they wouldn't like me anymore and they wouldn't love me and they would reject me. And what I found was the absolute opposite people embraced people loved me people. Um, you know, they, they just, they were gracious. Yeah. Sure. Were they disappointed? Sure. But they were so gracious, and, and and I and I really feel like it was maybe even a catalyst for for others to go. Well, if he if he can do this, I think I can do this too. Yeah, you had some people say, "Me too, Ben." No, oh, yeah. you had no idea yeah. that we're trapped in the same thing, okay. either restored at that well, point or not restored. Yeah, and this is and this is where we Heather and I really started to this whole thing where the enemy had had been convincing me my whole life that I was an outlier and that I was some sort of sicko weirdo. Um, I was like, well, that was such a lie to keep me trapped because, you know, as, as we started telling our story, everyone starts coming out of the woodwork in the, in our Christian community saying, dude, we have the same story. I have the same struggle. Um, you know, talk to pastor and he, he's, you know, telling me, man, I'm, I, I still struggle in this and this is still an issue for me. And I was like, oh, this is like every man's battle almost. And, you know, Jenny, I was, I was with a group of teenagers this summer um, at camp and we had about, uh, 50 of them downstairs at, at, at the retreat center. And we were, we were having this talk and I just said, how many are, are just currently struggling with pornography? Like, like it's, it's a current issue. And, you know, I think everybody, but one, one kid was like, yeah, we are currently, uh, consistently looking at pornography and we want to stop. And so yeah. this is like, this is where I'm it's not at. Talking about one kid in a classroom. Yeah. No, 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 no. And, and, you know, like when, when I hear don't mess with our kids and, and here's what, here's what I would say. And tell me what you think about this. I, I think of people, you know, taking this message the wrong, not the wrong way, but misguided and, and getting mad at everybody else and, 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 and focusing it like, yeah, school system, don't mess with our kids. And, and um, you know, Hey, teachers and, 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 and the whole time, like, your kids in the, in the bedroom looking at pornography or at night when you go to sleep, they've got a device in their bedroom. And so I see, I see don't mess with our kids as first and foremost, it's hey devil don't mess with our kids in in our own home, in our own home. And, um, and don't mess with, don't mess with our kids starts with my kids and and my household. And so I've got to be engaged and, and really, not just know what's going on in my school system, which, which we absolutely do in my government and all the things, but I've got to know what's going on in my home. And that's, that's what we're super passionate about is, is empowering parents and teenagers um, to, to, to fight this mm-hmm. thing together. Cause honestly, teenagers need their parents fully engaged in this yeah. battle. Yeah. That's fully exactly engaged right. in this battle and, and, and parents, uh, God has equipped you to parent your kids to, to, That's and right. so anyways, I'm, I get really passionate about empowering and equipping parents to, um, to know, to give them word choices, to know what to say, to know how to tackle this issue. And there is, I, I will tell you, there is such ignorance and heads in the sand when it comes to this issue. And I just hear over and over again, I hear, 
well, you know, our, our kid is homeschooled and they're, they're so sheltered. They don't know anything. And I'm just thinking, yeah. you don't know, nope. you don't know anything. Yeah. Um, yeah. So anyways, I just, wow. That's, I get, fi- I get is, fired, fired yeah. about that. <laughs> that is so stinking powerful what you just said. And I've never heard it said that way, Ben, that don't mess with our kids. It's like something that you're saying to yourself. Yeah. Don't mess. Okay. I am not to allow my kids to be messed with. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so it starts with, it starts with the devil. I'm telling him that, and I'm telling myself that yeah. so that I'm paying attention to my part and my role that you mentioned, Jenny mentioned first, when she was talking about your bio and just a little bit about you, she talked about cross the Island. You mentioned cross the Island, but kind of, you know, cause we're winding down on time here. So would you share sort of where you are now? Yes. Where you, sort of the end of the story, kind of what God has done and then talk about cross the Island, talk about ways that people can get a hold of you. They can get a hold of what you do because so many people are struggling with this, Ben. And it's like what you guys have to offer. I've witnessed firsthand to be one of the best ways out there for people to get free. And for parents, you know, Ben, you and I've talked Mm -hmm. to length about this, but I believe that cross the island, you know, the yeah. the ministry that you and Heather have through coaching and courses and videos and all the things, and definitely follow these guys on Instagram, cross the island and get on their website, cross the island.com. But one of the things that I see you playing in this, in this revival, in this reformation, this is family reformation. Not right. only do we need yeah. to get the pornographic books out of the schools, Mm-hmm. right? Cause there's books that are pornographic, yeah. but to get pornography out of the home. But I I've always seen that you and Heather have this cutting edge anointing to teach parents how Absolutely. to teach their kids. You know, yeah. mama bears, mama bears job is to protect, provide and teach. And a lot of parents do not know how to go about this. Mm-hmm. They're like, great. I, maybe my kids watching porn, but what do I even do? How do I even like, yeah. you know, approach that. So they've got to get connected to cross the Island because you're not just going to leave us high and dry at the end of the podcast. You're yeah. going to, you're going to lead people here into cross the Island.com where people can get completely engaged, taught and discipled in this very, very critical freedom that every child deserves and every adult deserves as well. So tell us yeah. a little bit more about what, um, yeah. of course, cross island, let's put the banner up on that. And then, um, what can they find here across the Island? And of, of course, Sean, I had the question originally. Yes. So let's you go. Said, into that. You said, where are we now? We, we, as you heard, we're pastoring. Um, we met Bob and Jenny during this time and they were, um, in just this community. And now we're, we're pastoring here in Portland and we're, um, just like we said, love seeing people free. And, Part of that is, is through this coaching and courses. And so, um, you know, we have right now, we have two courses. I'm sure it's going to expand, but the courses we have right now are a marriage course. And that's, that's for married couples. That's, that's really to restore intimacy and to, to heal unwanted sexual brokenness. And so we just take people really through the same journey that God took us on. He gave us a template and we're just saying, uh, here's the template that God used with us and it's really awesome. And, um, and so we're there for them to walk them through those things in community. And we've seen a lot of people set free. And what I'm really excited about is we're going to be doing 30 day porn free challenges for teenage boys. Um, we're starting with, we're starting with teenage boys with young men. Um, I know it's going to expand to, to, to girls. Um, because you know, the statistics are that young ladies are, are looking at, pornography at a, at a massive increasing rate. Um, it's like 51%, uh, whereas young boys reporting, it's like 73% right now, which I think is, is actually an under, it's underreported, um, but it's at 73%. And, and really, you guys, it's, this is not just for the young men, this, this course, this 30-day porn challenge. And really, we're calling it a porn-free challenge because that's a, a name that gets attention. But really, we want to um, start. In, the fruit know. of it is you get porn free. Well, it, exactly. It's a, it's a de- it's a detox, but it's also building yourself up, you know, in in um, in the Word of God and just your neuroplasticity. What the brain 
brain chemistry. So we, we tap into the natural and we tap into the spiritual identity. But what I'm most excited about is I'm most excited about that the course comes with Zooms and community for the parents. Yeah. And there, there are so many lessons that, uh, that, that parents, you know, just even no locked doors. Um, you need to have all the passwords for, for all the places, for all the things. I want to remind parents, it is your cell phone. You pay the bill. Can I get an amen? Um, amen. <laughs> how, to have fam- how, how to have family meetings, how to, how to pray through your house, how to anoint your, your, your house with oil, how to, you know, just all, all the things that, um, how to use word choices, how to, how to, how to address these things with your, with your, um, with your young men and, and then really demystifying it and, and taking it again out of that, that, uh, that shame realm and taking it out of that, that, wow. um, what, the, what we said before that it's not so much a morality issue. If we can understand that um, we talk about the power of it's telling, important. telling your kids your own testimony and where right. God found you. Most kids don't know their parents' testimony. Right. And so they're, they're just want, they're just, again, thinking that they're some one-off loser that's letting their parents down and right. um, have no clue that their parents, you know, went through something very similar. Cause a lot You're of times, asking- you're it's asking them to be transparent, right? Yes. You're asking them to be transparent, but you haven't done it. And so we totally. need to go first. I have learned so much from you, Ben. Like I just, the stuff you're saying, I'm going, every parent needs to do this. Every mm-hmm. single parent, because like taking the shame away, when you call it unwanted sexual behavior, just even for a, 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 a teenager or a young person or any person to, to hear it said that way. Even yeah. for when you came to understand it was unwanted sexual behavior. I don't want to be doing this. I don't want to be yeah. addicted to this. I don't want to be, I don't want to be locked in the bathroom. I, I don't want this. No, I want to love Jesus. And when, and then the parent or the wife or the husband or whoever's, you know, understanding yeah. it from that vantage point too, it takes the shame out of it. So there's just, there's so many things that I've learned. I was thinking about the other day, I heard Heather, which Ben is your wife. Um, I heard for those who don't know, uh, but I heard Heather say he, she was talking about one of the boys and she was saying um, one of your boys. And she was saying what she said to him was, I trust you. I don't trust the devil. Mm-hmm. And I'm oh, like, I said that to my kids. Too. I love that. She said that. Like I took yeah. that right there and I, my kids are grown and I'm thinking I'm going to grab that one. It's not that yeah. I don't trust you. I don't trust the devil. And so just all of the things you guys have, it's, it's so much, we could be on here for five years, but uh, I know we need to kind of wrap up. So is there anything else you have, Jenny? Before? No, I, I just want you to pray, Ben, for yeah. people who either they know they need to um, get this conversation in the household. They need to get discipling. Mm-hmm. Let's not leave it to our you know, youth pastors and our kids pastors. Right. That is not where that responsibility is placed. It's no. placed in the home on the parents. And we have the authority to actually cut the head off the snake on this deal. Well, yeah. Um, so, and then parents here that are struggling with pornography, there's some that are like, I, I'm a fraud if I do that because I'm hooked in it myself, you know? So, yeah. um, and there'll be people on here that'll be 70 and 80 years old that have never, um, had the shame taken off them for any unwanted sexual behavior. So do you, would you just head right into prayer and pray yeah. for, um, any, anybody that comes to mind, especially the ones with, that I just yeah. described? Yeah. And what teens are learning from pornography is shaping how they understand and, and view sex and sexual relationships. And so it's just, it's God, God's, God's intent and God's view of this is, is really um, getting put on the back burner. So we're wanting to restore that, the, the beauty of this. So yeah, let's, let's pray. Father, I, I thank you for every person that's listening right now. Lord, I especially pray for the parents right now that feel hopeless that feel ill-equipped, that feel like they, they, they are lost and they don't know what to do with their young person. Father, I, I just pray right now. And number one, God, I thank you for your grace. I thank you that it, as we lean into this, as we lean in and, and we don't run away, Father, I thank you that your grace empowers us to, to do what you've called us to do. And what you've called us to do is to, to pastor our kids and it's to parent our kids and it's to raise them up in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. 
and to raise them up in, with biblical principles and values and, and um, to set them up for the future. And so, Lord, I just pray right now, God, for every parent that, that you would um, give them hope right now in this moment. Give them hope right now. Father, I pray for any any young person that's listening right now that's that's in addiction where they just they can literally feel the hook. They can feel the unwanted nature of this and and they feel hopeless and they feel dirty and stained. And Lord, I I pray right now that you would touch them right where they're at, God, that you would minister life and hope and healing, Father, in the name of Jesus. God, I just I thank you that you've called us to live in the light is you are in the light and we have fellowship with you and, and the blood of Jesus continually cleanses us from all unrighteousness. I, pl- I pray God that we would walk in, in integrity and character. And I thank you for the opportunity that we have to minister this to our young people in Jesus name. Amen. Jesus name. Amen. Thank you so much, Ben. This has been yes. super, super valuable. And I believe that there's so many people that have been massively encouraged and maybe even a little nervous because it's like, okay, here we go. You know, I got to do this, but I just want to tell every listener, you can do this. You can do this. God's empowered you and equipped you. Can I say one more thing? Absolutely. I, um, I, I really believe that every parent needs to take this course and your kid needs to take it too. Even if you don't know that they're actively... This could be something that actually is preventative and keeps them from it and gives them an understanding when, when they are exposed to it. Cause let me tell you, they will be exposed to it. And I'll leave you with, I'm going to leave you with one tip and then I'm done. Um, One of the biggest kickbacks to phones in the room is I need an alarm clock. Guess what? You guys, they sell alarm clocks on Amazon for $10 and buy your kids an analog alarm clock so they can keep their phone out of their room. That's my tip of the day. There you go. That's really, really good. And yeah. that's something super practical that people can yeah. put in place today. Okay. This has been so yeah. awesome. Thank you so much, Ben. We love you and Heather and onward yeah. into victory. So yes. many stories are going to come out of the, across the Island. Make sure that you go to cross the Island.com, get engaged, get involved, make sure that you don't leave the future of your kids or yourself up to chance. Because if the devil has some open opportunity, he'll take it. But when we fill it with truth and love and discipleship and this kind of wisdom, then that's how we get through this on the other side without the enemy stealing our destiny or our kid's destiny. And this this has to be dealt with. If we're going to go see America be saved, see America turn for God, we must have this thing uprooted on a massive scale. So let's do this together, you guys. God's empowering us to do it. Thank you so much, Ben. We appreciate you greatly. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for being here. Don't mess with our kids. This um, episode has been epic. It's been an epic episode. And I'm just thinking about how many friends I have, Shauna, who have kids in the home who think, Mm -hmm. you know, oh, wow, I just did the alarm clock thing with their phone. Um, There's a lot of people today that need to hear this message immediately immediately. There could be a child's future depending on their freedom, on their parents hearing this, or even I'm going to have all my teenagers listen to this. I'm going to have all of them listen to it. And it's not to accuse them. It is to disciple them. So this is discipleship coming into the home because we're not just protecting and defending kids. We must train them in the way they should go so that they don't depart from it. So let's use these podcasts, episode like this, to share with our kids, to disciple our families, and let's not give the devil a single inch, not a single millimeter that the devil can have because um, our kids are too important. Your family is too important. Your destiny is too important. So we are with you. We're in this together, and we're so happy that you joined us today for this episode, and we'll see you guys real soon.